Katie again. Um, I have got so many amazing picture books for you to look at that I said, well, let's do this today. So we're going to leap in without um, too much um, nattering beforehand, which as you all know is my forte. Um, I've got about 12 or 13 to show you, most of them fiction, a couple of non-fiction, and just a couple of pages each. So you can have a look inside and see if you, if you like the feeling of it. So our first one up today is uh, Hello Jimmy by Anna Walker. Now Anna Walker will be known very, very well known to many of you. And uh, this is one that she writes and illustrates herself, so um, as she does with a lot, of, a lot of them. So this is where we have a little story, I hope you can see that nicely there. When um, Jack stayed at his dad's house, uh, they made tacos and milkshakes too. Sometimes they talked and sometimes they didn't. His dad liked to tell funny jokes, but he hadn't told one in a while. So we have this little feeling of sort of, um, something not quite said here and then one day he comes home with a surprise and Jack didn't like surprises. So we have Jimmy who arrives, who's going to come into the household and Jimmy's quite funny and uh, he makes dad laugh and we just, Jimmy begins to feel, Jack begins to feel a little bit um, sort of out of the picture if you like, literally. Um, look at this. So this is that lyrical watercolour quality that we know um, and expect from Anna. Um, next one up, Neil Gaiman um, has written this one. It's illustrated by Chris Riddell that many of you will know as well. Pirate Stew, great laugh. Okay, so this one um, is pretty slightly older, ready for a, a you know, lot of text in here. Beautiful illustrations, like two little ones who will be uh, left alone because mum and dad are going out and they say they won't be babysat. Um, so the parents then say you must not grump and pout we're going out and that is that and guess who comes to babysit and not only does Long John Macron ship's cook he babysit them but he actually brings a couple of helpers with him so we have this glorious illustration quite a long um, text but it's very busy keep everybody a pirate queue and they were not tame um, you know, lots of illustration, lots of things to look at, uh, lots of text, a busy, funny, and it rhymes. I keep doing this the wrong way around. Um, next one up is uh, Piper Picks the Perfect Pet by Caroline Tui and Nikki Johnson. And this is a very a simpler one for uh, maybe your younger uh, reader. So we have this. Um, Piper's going to pick a pet and is going to say, uh, my dad says I can choose a pet, but I'm not sure which pet to get. So, goes through the options of whether we have a fluffy dog or a scruffy dog, a bouncy dog or a flouncy dog. Um, simple text, gorgeous little illustrations there. And we go from dogs through to, it's not all dogs, you know, cats. It's a, it's a book that wants to bounce, this one. Um, all the way through to, other options and wait and see what Piper picks at the end. Uh, next one up again, this is Nick Bland, a lot of you, Wolfred by Nick Bland, and we'll know Nick Bland is uh, his own unique blend of humour. Um, these are um, beautifully illustrated, again this kind of oil colour, again a rhyming text and we have the warmest of lights on the coldest of nights um, and Wolfred is coming to the Fancy Pants Tower which is some kind of hotel, and he was hungry, he was cold, and he wants to get a job. So this very charming boss says, okay, uh, here's Trotters covered in gold. I rather like that one. He says, uh, I'm gonna make you the, the, the lift boy, and you push the buttons, and you don't say hello. You don't, you know, you're not there. Basically, you're invisible. Um, this, the rich and the famous come here. You're gonna live with the, the broom and the mop, and well, we'll just see where this all goes to. So you get lots of uh, looks at who the different guests might be, um, and you know, Wolfred's just doing his job, and then something is gonna happen because actually Wolfred ends up telling little stories and whooshing them out the window in paper planes, and we'll have to wait and see if that goes well or not. An absolute, I think, bound to be a classic. Another one that you, um, You'll recognise Guess How Much I Love You by Sam McBratney, and it's Anisha Jerome again who's illustrating this one. And um, so this one is Will You Be My Friend? This is a very gorgeous little story. So this, this is a little cloudy mountain hair. 
little nut brown hare who wanted to play, but there was much to be done and big nut brown hare was very busy. So look at these illustrations. So we're going to have little nut brown hare is going to go off and explore on his own and there'll be a bit of exploring, but he realizes that even though he sees a little friend in a puddle, it's not really an, uh, another friend, it's just him. So we shadow and then there's somebody looking straight at him, someone real and maybe He'll have found a friend, so that's Will You Be My Friend by Sam McBretney. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Another hardback, uh, one coming up new. This is Oliver Jeffers. I mean, these are all new. Um, called What'll We Build? Plans for Our Future Together. Now, we know what to expect from Oliver Jeffers. He does make us think quite a lot about um, little ones starting out in the world. And this is um, one I think he wrote for his daughter. Um, and it's about what we're going to build, what should we build you and I. So get this lovely pair of hands, look I can do this too. And we have our tools for starting up, for putting things together and taking things apart. See your little face here going, oh god. Um, let's build a door where there was none. So instantly we're in the world of kind of uh, the imagination. Um, we'll build a house to be our home. The practicalities of I'll build your future, you'll build mine, we'll build a watch to keep our time and then we explode into the world. We, we know what to expect with the kind of lyrical imagination of Oliver Jeffers. This one is set to be an instant classic. Um, so, loving that one. Love them all, really. Emily Gravis, we know we had Tidy before. She um, writes and illustrates. Um, and this is a very interesting little one because she very often has look at that. Um, little e environmental messages for us, you know, telling us to be uh, tidy or telling us to look after nature. This one's too much stuff, so we can imagine. Here we have our magpies, um, and in a tree that was taller than all of the rest, Meg and Ash were busy building a nest. So we're going to have this nest building. Now this is for your older child as well. It's, it's probably suitable for four or five year olds. Um, so they, again, it rhymes, so they're going to be building everything in this this nest is going to getting quite complicated lots of lovely eggs in there lots of things now this is about what they accumulate because these are things that they think their chicks are going to need as well so they've got bigger stuff and abandoned things and as you can imagine it's getting a little bit hectic up here we even have a character from tidy we're going to add in a bicycle we're going to add in a car i mean really well and then you can imagine so it's how we recover that situation. That is really a super little message, but great fun book. Another abuse again, this one uh, by Jess Rightcleft, who has done, um, you know, is there anyone dad like you, anyone mum like you? So it's welcome baby to this world. And absolutely gorgeous. Those beautiful um, watercolor illustrations. So welcome baby to this world, lashes long and fingers curled. Dreaming stories for our years, whispered words to tiny ears. Now, isn't this delightful as well? So it's all about what we will do together with our new baby, and as baby grows up, what are the things that we'll do together? So have a look at those beautiful um, illustrations. Um, what we'll go looking for rainbow gold. I lift you to those bendy trees. Um, an absolute dote here. Um, so a perfect pick for that new baby, or maybe that not quite so new baby, but you know, um, gorgeous. This one uh, I think is close to everybody's hearts, at least I hope it will be. It's um, from Patrick Guest and Jonathan Bentley. Now this one is very much uh, topical I suppose because we have been separated from, you know, the people we love. Uh, we haven't been able to get to see everybody. So this is a book that was um, developed in response to not actually being able to get to the people for the ones we really miss. So it's about out of the, out the window I can see a new world looking back at me so with this lovely dreamy little child. This is suitable for absolutely everybody from zero to 150. The streets are still, there are no more crowds. I guess I'll just enjoy the crowds. So look at this. So it's looking out into the world, looking at using your imagination. Um, all of the little people looking out and there are people out there, so it's how we can get to get to connect, even though we can't actually touch. So it's all the different things that are happening in people's windows, which is how it has been and how 
I'm hoping it might not necessarily continue like that, but there you go. I'm not going to show you too much because there are some absolutely gorgeous treats in store. Whoops, I've left an empty space. David will be cross with me. Couple of non-fiction. Now, this, a lot of you have gone for the Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls series. And this one is the 100 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World. I think this is a very lovely um, addition to the collection. Very thoughtful. So we've had Rebel Girls 1 and 2. Um, and it's as usual. You know what to, to, to expect from this format. So you get your text and your your absolutely gorgeous um, illustrations that are very varied in style. So as we've said, I have some Carmen Miranda, you, I have some um, customers who said they've been buying these and reading them a little bit like um, fairy stories, once upon a time. So we have that kind of text. Names that I'm not, personally, I don't know all of these people. And they're global, an Iranian graphic novelist, they're um, activists, there's a little bit of everything, beautiful Olga Corbett. So um, that is a, an ideal gift for someone who reads independently, or you might give it to um, a read to at night time instead of a fairy story. Another beauty here, Sarah Allen's Busy Beaks, illustrated by her too, so look at that gorgeous cover um, in uh, first page. Look at this, so um, Australian. Little while, it gets simple, but there's some beautiful words, and it is an educational book. So, you've got Warble of Magpies not far behind, you've got Pelicans Fishing for Breakfast in Groups. We have the little names in, uh, in their English name and, and Latin um, illustrated again. So, you've got all that's an absolute joy, isn't it? So, for a first child who's really interested, and oh, this is my favorite, I love Tawny Frogmans. Um, you know, interested in birds, that's an absolute beaut. Um, another gorgeous one that you, most of you will have remembered or have seen last year, the Illustration Encyclopedia Dane of Ugly Animals. We have the second one from Sammy Bailey. So this one is hilarious, I mean, look at that. So this is sort of, I think you're, we're talking, you know, I think seven and eight would be interested in that, nine will manage that text. So um, depending, obviously you've, you, you know, I wouldn't be afraid of looking at that, just even at the pictures. Some of these are quite, um, you know, creepy and terrifying, but this is the world we live in. Look at these cane toad coffin rays. So that, that is an absolutely gorgeous gift. Um, nice solid hardback. So there we go for that one. And the last one up here is Dragon Ark. Now this is, we have, um, I've. I'm quite astonished by this book because of its beautiful, beautiful, beautiful illustration. So it's about the quest to save the rarest dragon on earth. And it's, um, you know, there's a lot of material in here. So I am thinking eight, nine up. I would even say that you're, you know, you've got 10, 11 year olds, you'll find this fa fascinating. So a lot of busy stuff going on, a lot of stuff to, not too much text obviously, but um, we're going to be looking at all of the information, all of the designs on this and then you're in the different areas, so where are we going to get the different dragons? And now we start reading. Um, that's some solid reading going on in there. And I put this in educational, I know it's fantasy, but we all need to be educated about um, dragons, I think, because if we don't look out for dragons, who on earth is going to? So that's basically, that's my last one on the list. Um, an absolute beaut. Um, there we go, that's as much as I'm going to show you this time. Um, if I've rabbited too much, I'm terribly sorry. Um, I'm hoping you'll be able to come in and get some of those. Um, I don't know yet, um, but I look forward to seeing your orders and uh, I do look forward to seeing you in the shop again very soon, I hope. So that's it for now. Bye-bye.